It's a celebrity special stars in their eyes. Please welcome your host, Matthew Kelly. Hello and welcome to another celebrity stars in their eyes. This time, not five, but six celebrities are backstage checking the small print in their contracts, <laughs> desperately trying to find a get-out clause, but no one escapes those doors. Or the terrifying <laughs> might of our lawyers, Messrs Pew Pew, Barney McGrew, Cuthbert Dibble and Grubb. <laughs> or as we call them, the firemen. Mess with those boys and you're fired. <laughs> Over the last few weeks, six celebrities have taken on new identities, but we found their safe houses and dragged them back here. We've got a soap stallion, a chat goddess, a comedy duo, a Liverpool lovely and a sporting legend. Who are they and who will they be? See if you can guess the identity of our first celebrity. He took on the Mitchell brothers in a weekly hard stare competition, so this should be easy. But just who is celebrity star guest number one? Being an actor, my character works in a restaurant, goes to the pub, causes trouble. And then after the work, I do the same. I go to the pub and have, and have a few bevies with my pals. I'm absolutely terrified about doing the stars in their eyes. I actually can't believe that I got involved in the whole venture in the first place. One minute it sounds good, as it gets nearer, you start getting a bit more scared and it dawns on you what you're actually going to do. And uh, you just got to do it, really, so I'm just going to go out there and strap my stuff. I'm a huge fan of the person I'm going to be tonight. And everyone I speak to is a massive fan. There's, there's only one of the men I'm going to do. My friends think I'm a lunatic for going on the show, but also some of them are really encouraging. Some of them think it's, it's great, you know what I mean? It's a very brave thing to do. Most people just laugh when I tell them what I'm going to be doing. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I love singing, but normally I, I leave it to the shower and the bath or on the way to work in the car. I sang once before in public, and, and, and I enjoyed that. You know, a massive rush of euphoria, but as I said, the nerves, man, and the nerves building up to this, because like, it's been planned for months. I think I'm just going to go for it and give it large. I'm just going to be so enthralled in the brain of whatever, whatever I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to feel like a man, so I'm just going to be massively confident. I hope. And if you're going to have it large, there's no bigger place to do it. So please welcome Mark Bannerman. <laughs> I'm going to take you way back now to six years old and your very first appearance on stage. Was that a successful do? Well, it wasn't really. The first, the first time I was going to be on stage was I was, about, I was about six and I thought I was going to be Prince Charming. Turned out I was a tree. So that gave me the up. <laughs> Next time, I've, we're doing the Pied Piper and I thought, yeah, definitely I'm going to be the Pied Piper. Turned out I was a rat. <laughs> We've come to do, and my mum and dad are in the audience, and they're, as they are tonight. My mum and dad never... Uh, and we're, uh, we're just about to do it. We're on stage and the, the, the rats are going around the circle and all they seemed to do was go around the circle. I got the hump again and left, walked off, got changed, went home and uh, Mum didn't know that I'd gone home. So, so you left the whole building and your Mum and Dad are still waiting to see you? I went home and I couldn't get in either. I didn't even have a key, so I just sat outside the house. <laughs> sat outside the house with the hump and waiting for them to so come home. So what are you saying? That you might just not tip up to sing your song tonight? Well, it's a possibility. <laughs> now, there, there are a few things that, that connect with your life with this person. Mm. Tell me, because your parents love this person that you went yeah, to Yeah, my mum, when, when this person died, I was, I was really young, only a small boy, and she and we, we was in the kitchen in our, in our house. And she burst into tears when she heard it on the radio. So I started to cry because, you know, if your mum and dad cry, it's, it's upsetting. So I've cried with my mum. And after, I, after we both cried about this person, I just thought, well, he must be very special. So I've just kind of and this followed really him ever since. And is a very special person. Yeah. How old were you then? I was three. Three years old, so that should give you some clue about the person he's going to be. Yeah. He didn't set off to be a singer, did he? No, same as me, actually. He started out, he wanted to be a truck driver. And my dad's a truck driver, so that's, that's really what I wanted to do when I was a boy, right. be a truck, truck driver. I, got, I got into this game, God knows that. <laughs> <laughs> what was his favourite food? Cheeseburgers. Yeah, that's Loved good. the cheeseburger. What though. was he known as? The king of rock and roll. Tell us who you're going to be tonight, Mark. Tonight, Matthew. 
I'm going to be Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley! A real comeback specialist tonight, singing live. Now, our that is Elvis Presley! How are you doing this Very good. Morning. Let me have another go, man. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need the sign. We could tell who you were. Could you? What the floppy fringe? Yeah. No, I'm going to tell them how this actually happened because we found out Ooh, that yeah. Mark does Elvis just as a little party piece, don't you? At work, yeah. At or work. in the bath, yeah. yeah. But then, that's it. Just and that's all. <laughs> and then we got him to do this on Will the strength it? of the party piece. Yeah, man. And what's the difference between doing a party piece and doing this? <laughs> Well, for one, you've got 300 people rather than just on your own. Yeah. Mm. That's a big difference, isn't it? And then, um, music as well, that helps. Yeah, that does help. <laughs> and then you've got someone fiddling about in makeup. That's, uh, that's always a bonus. Yeah, that's always good. Yes, yeah, so you do look yeah. like it. But I will tell you. Yeah, man. You started off in Cinderella as a tree. Oh, yeah. You did Pipe Piper as a rat. Yeah. But here on Stars and Eyes, you are the king. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, my brother, my man, Elvis Presley! Jerry Springer would have loved Elvis. The girlfriends, the money, the squirrel burgers. Yes, Jerry's had them all. But in this more civilised country, things like I married my wife's Rottweiler and back off, I'm a boy that wears bras, is only found as graffiti in the House of Commons. Chat shows can be a circus, so you'll always need an experienced ringmaster. And keeping the clowns and the animals in check is star guest number two. 
Well, basically, I think I'm a Norfolk country housewife. Three days a week, I'm an ordinary everyday mum. I take the children to school, do the washing, walk the dog. And then uh, two days a week, I work like a, a mad thing. Well, I think when I'm actually singing on Stars in Their Eyes, the girls will be mouthing the words with me because every single day for how many weeks on the school run, we've had the tape on in the car and they're singing along and they correct me when I make mistakes. They're the real experts in all of this. People keep telling me I should be nervous. No doubt I should be using the loo a lot just before I go on. What made me decide to do Stars in Your Eyes was when I walked in on a conversation between my husband and the children, the children said, Daddy, can Mummy sing? And he said, well, not really, darling. And I said, I heard that right, I'm doing it. <laughs> but secretly, I'd like to think he's proud of me. I have never done anything like this in my life before. Let me tell you, there are a number of people up the shops who think I'm completely mad, but uh, I'll give anything a go once. For once, she'll be answering the questions. Please welcome Trisha Goddard. <laughs> This is this is very new territory here for you, isn't it? Very scary. Very yeah, scary. Really, is it? Yes, being on the receiving end of... You're going to ask me lots of difficult questions? No, no. I'm just going to ask you about that house. You're on good money, aren't you? Did you see that? <laughs> now, you have put a lot into this. I mean, you've made some great investment into being the person that you're going to be tonight. Yes. So, tell us... What I spent a lot of money. You have spent. I spent a lot of money. I went down to the early learning centre, and for two ninety nine, they've got one of those Echo karaoke mics, and I bought one of those, and I've been singing with that around the house. <laughs> so this is really promising tonight. <laughs> Makes should, you sound good. I should build a company for that. I'll tell you what. I've got this great thing. I've, I have been given. I don't know who gave me this, but. This is a note on hotel note paper, right? And it's from your daughters, and it's got some instructions for you. And it's the only, the first one I can read. It says, no free way yay. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, this is from Maddie, uh, my six-year-old. Uh, yeah. My ten-year-old Billy's been helping me as well, but Maddie thought I needed it. She said, take that with you, right. in case you forget. It says, no free way, 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 out of... Tune, I think that's C H O N. That's oh, how yeah. six are all spoke. Tune. tune. And, and no giggle, G I G I double L. No, no giggles, because I giggled. So she said, take that with me, and right. thanks, Mads. I'm going to remember that. Right. And, yes. and Billy, uh, Billy's taught me loads of things as well. So. Right. So we'll hope that that works. They know every word. Watch out everything. for the way A's and the giggle. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this person. OK, well, she was born in 1940 in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. She was the first artist to record songs by Burt Bacharach and Hal David. Right. She's actually a cousin of Whitney Houston. Oh, so now we're forming a picture, but the final clue is a good one. She does psychic work, hosting a psychic television show. Oh, fantastic. So tell us who you're going to be tonight, Tricia. Well, tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Dionne Warwick. Dionne Warwick! <laughs> With another pertinent question tonight, singing live, Trisha Goddard is Dion Warwick.
I can't wait for the Trisha show next week. I can see it now. <laughs> it's going to be... Mothers ask their daughters, do you know the way to San Jose? <laughs> Only smarties have the answer. <laughs> yes, yes. You see, that £2.99 was money well spent in the early morning. Do you so think was so? Do you think oh, yes, so? wandering around the house with a plastic ice cream cornet. But they'll never sell again. Despite what the children said, you seen they were checking you for giggles then. I, I don't think do, I giggled. No, no. I she was giggled. good, wasn't she, your mum? Was I all right, girls? Yeah, they're very happy with you, and so are we. Ladies and gentlemen, Trisha Goddard as Dion Warwick. <laughs> After the break, not one, not two, but three celebrities will be putting our money where their mouth is. Who are their public identities and what are their secret identities? <gasps> it's just like Bruce Wayne and Batman here by day, respected pillar of the community by night, all togged up in restrictive rubber. Which reminds me, I've just got to sort something out for the after show party. I'll see you in a minute. Bye. <laughs> Celebrity stars in their eyes. This stage is like an ancient Roman Colosseum where the audience decide your fate. Back then, if you made one mistake, you'd be mauled by lions in the columns. Now you get mauled by TV critics in their columns. Hard to know which is scarier. Coming up, the critics' choice in comedy and soap. But first, something you rarely see on stars, a duet. So which hysterical double act is about to become a musical double act? It takes two with celebrity star guests number three. I'm a very big fan of the person I'm going to be tonight. She's a larger-than-life icon for me. Although she's quite a bit smaller than me in real life, she's got a lovely large personality. I'm a, a massive fan of the person I'm going to be tonight. She was a fashion pioneer in the 80s. She was a trailblazer for many new styles. My particular favourite being the leather jacket with enormous shoulder pads, one of which I still have in my wardrobe. Our working day consists of chatting, eating, resting from the chatting and then saying goodbye. The thing I love most about my job is that it involves absolutely no thought whatsoever. Primarily, I suppose, I really wanted to go on Stars in Their Eyes because um, I really, really fancy Matthew Kelly. My main worry uh, for Stars in Their Eyes is that I will be wearing a court shoe and I'm worried about tripping over, but mainly I'm worried about looking like a Liverpudlian docker in heels. I'm very much looking forward to my wig which has been handcrafted and I have to say is, is a bit of a peach. Winning Stars in the Eyes would be a fantastic uh, achievement for us, partly because the only thing I've ever won was third prize in a poetry competition in 1976. When the doors swish back in that uh, inimitable Star Trek type way, I'll just be very, very, very excited. My first thought will be, why can't I have doors like that at home? Oh, I'm exhausted after that work. Siesta after lunch? Absolutely. Delivered fresh right to those doors in just a few moments. Please welcome Mel and Sue. Thank you very much. So you fancy me, Mel? Mel fancies you. Oh, this is Matthew, so good. Matthew, I'm slightly in pieces to be in your company tonight. Really? Yeah. My You're voice the... has gone a bit weird as well. It's <laughs> yeah. a very reassuring smell. You do. What's the scariest thing you've ever had to do, obviously, apart from this? This is scary. Uh, I think it was the first show we ever did. We did the Edinburgh Festival in 1993. Mel was, uh, I think she was 41. 41. Uh, it was her first gig. <laughs> And uh, we'd, we'd forgotten to write the last quarter of the show. This is totally genuine, and we just forgot. And so our first performance, we got to the point and thought, there's no more, but people obviously paid. So we sung a bit and decided that it'd be quite good Terrible. to uh, use some props, which yes. we did. All we had on our person, or persons, were two torches and a pastry. Yeah. That's all we had to work with. Yeah. It was terrible. It went very, very badly. Very bad. I hesitate to ask, but what did you do with... Shone the torches out the pastry. It was a very... <laughs> it was a very weak beam. Very weak beam. We just did that. We thought it was quite dramatic, quite it's funny, maybe. Yeah, but, it's uh, almost no. as surreal as this show. You're going to be two fantastic birds. Hold my hand, birds. Matthew. Hold my hand. Headline. Thank you. Truly Let's shaking. Hold hands. Thank you. Well done. Well, actually, you are shaking. Slightly. Yeah. Yeah. I've got terrible VPL. Can't let go now. Now. <laughs> Tell me about the, these two fabulous okay. girls are going to be. Uh, my clue as to my character is she has hair like King Charles. <laughs> she, she does, she does. Still to this day, and what's your called in the 80s. Clue, Mel? 
if my character was in Argentina... Are you doing mime? <laughs> Simultaneous mime transmission. If my character was in Argentina, she would be called Señorita Pajanización. Uh, Pajanización. <laughs> Perhaps you could tell us who you're going to be tonight, then. We've got to get this right. Timing. Tonight, tonight Matthew, Matthew Kelly, we're we are going, going to be... Elaine Page... And Barbara Dixon. <laughs> Elaine Page and Barbara Dixon! You thought you knew them so well until tonight. Singing live, well and true are Elaine Page and Barbara Dixon! Gather in, gather in, girls. Comfort, <laughs> comfort now. Smell the hair. You to. Ooh, ooh, that is nice. <laughs> and I should be trying some of that later. <laughs> you know, you two girls, you are the most comfort confident girls I've ever come across. You do the Edinburgh Festival, you do your stand-up, you do live shows, and you really were shaking before you did this, weren't you? Yes. As an experience, how was it for you? My armpits are so sweaty, ladies and gents, it's, uh, it's frightening. And thank you for sharing that. Thanks. That's and don't go backstage, because some of Mel's still back there. Sorry. <laughs> You did the girls proud and Aww. yourselves. Thanks Ladies for and having gentlemen. us, Matthew. Cheers. Mel and Sue as Elaine Page and Barbara Dixon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've already seen Mel and Sue, Chris Goddard and Mark Bannerman. And if EastEnders is the crown jewels of the BBC, then the Coronation Street of Channel 4 is Brookside. And the Queen of the Close is celebrity star guest number four.
My working day usually starts about 8 a.m. and uh, if it's a long day, if I'm doing all the scenes, it can go on until 8 at night. It's long hours and then you go home and you learn your lines, but I wouldn't swap it for the world. TV does seem glamorous, but it's not so glamorous when you get handed this uh, bright blue uniform to put on at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> the cast all get on really well. It's very, very friendly and I seem to spend a lot of my time with, with Sue and Dean, who play with mum and dad in the show. When um, they heard I was going to be on Stars, I mean, I told a few people at first and the word gets around, you know. Everyone was really supportive and really excited about it. And so you can be, you're gonna do. I wanted to do stars because I'm such a fan of the show. I'm really excited about it. I sat in the audience for the last celebrity one and I was dead excited pressing my button vote and I was like chuffed. My character got to sing on TV before. She was in a show called Sing Like a Star, which is a spoof of stars. And uh, I got to sing the Shoop Shoop song by Cher. <laughs> so when I watched Stars and Carol Vorderman did it, I was miffed because she picked me to the post and she looked better in the cat suit, skinnier. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Tonight she's going to sing like a star again. Please welcome Claire Sweeney. <laughs> See this girl here, oh, you're well used to talent shows, aren't you? Yeah, when I was uh, 14, yeah. my mum and dad persuaded me to go into a talent contest on the local social club. So I'd been practising all week, got my songs sorted, and I was really nervous in the wings. And the compere comes on stage and he says, ladies and gentlemen, give the girl a chance, she's only 14 years of age, first time on stage. Please welcome on stage Claire Sweeney. By the way, the bingo tickets and butties have been served at the back. <laughs> and everyone ran to the back of the room and I come <laughs> on to like an empty room. <laughs> and you and I have met before, haven't we? Another talent contest. Oh yeah, it was, wasn't it? In Bournemouth. Yeah. I was sat behind you and you were one of the judges and I was like dead impressed with you. And you had one of your coloured waistcoats on, you remember oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> no, they were impressive. Oh, I they? thought they were marvellous. Yes. And you had your big hair and I couldn't see the talent because of your hair. I, tried to <laughs> the top. I thought you were marvellous. Yeah, I had inherited my mother's perm at that time. <laughs> <laughs> a Demi Wave. Who won, who won that talent contest? He was a unicyclist juggler. Oh, that, yeah, he was. He was very good. He was excellent. What was he, the prize? It was, I think it was a contract on a cruise ship. Oh. <laughs> it was, it was a contract on a cruise ship. And I often used to think, as I went to work on ships, and I used to think, how's he going to do that when the ship's rocking? <laughs> you know, for some, and I used to work on the ships. If the ship rocked and we did a dance routine, we'd all have to go like that to the other side of the stage. <laughs> but imagine him and his bike juggling. Tell me a little bit about this person. She was born in 1968 in Quebec, yeah. in Canada. She um, records in both French and English. And finally... She sang a song about a sinking ship. I will never get that. So you better tell us who you're going to be tonight. Oh, I've always wanted to say this. Off you go. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Celine Dion. Celine Dion! <laughs> massive folk, massive iceberg, massive hit. Tonight, singing live, Claire Sweeney is Celine Dion!
<laughs> well, I tell you what, Lindsay Corkle's had something buried under her patio these last oh, few years. I think my mascara's ran. Oh. <laughs> I tell you what, not one of this audience went for the bingo cards and sandwiches. Oh. It was that good. You know, you said last year you were dead excited about pressing the button. How much yeah. more excited were you tonight? Uh, I was really scared then. Like, yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah, but you couldn't tell at all. Oh, thanks. Except you could tell that you enjoyed it. Yeah. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, Claire Sweeney as Celine Dion! <laughs> chose to sing a load of old ballads and coming up a star who chose to sing the blues. Now, I choose to take a break, but before the main adverts, I'd just like to promote my new product, Kelly's Baldness Cream for Men. <clears throat> <laughs> if you're bald, then Kelly's hair cream gives you a boost like you've never seen. It doesn't grow new hair, but what it does best is shrink the size of your head to the bit that's left. Thank you. <laughs> See you both. Bye. Stars in their eyes. During the break, our celebrities have been enjoying nibbles, dips, and crudite. That's our three boy dancers. Because so far, five celebs of mainly sound mind have been pistol whipped through Mother Kelly's doorstep and onto a very different stage in their lives. Tonight, they're possessed by the spirits of their musical heroes. If you were to hold a seance in HMV, this would be the result. And next to come knocking, a sporting legend who is about to tackle a different kind of track. It's celebrity star guest number five. Today I'm here at the Loughborough Athletic Meeting and it's really to make my athletes feel good about themselves. Well, I mean, all I can do really as an ex-athlete is to pass on my experience to the others. You know, they see me out there and they realise that I've done it all. You know, it gives them that little bit of confidence because I was such a fierce competitor. When the opponents see me out there, they think, oh, Sun so training with him, so they must be in really good shape. The way I feel about appearing on this show at the moment, I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest with you. What made me agree was pure stupidity. <laughs> Still at this moment, I'm hoping that I've got a back out clause, because I've always believed that it's just for people who actually can sing. I am going out there hoping to win. And people say, oh, you just go out there and enjoy yourself. That's what it's all about. I'm hoping to enjoy myself, but at the same time, I'm hoping you know, that I am good enough to win, because you know, I want to win. The 100 metre champion, Linford Christie, folks. As someone said, you know I can run, and I'm running. <laughs> There's no running away from this one. Please welcome Linford Christie. <laughs> Only the best here. Only the best. Do you, uh, do you miss competing? Oh, I miss competing, not the training, though. Except that you've had to do a load of training for this. Oh, too much. <laughs> I was a bit nervous, Mum, right now. I know, but you do the same. You tackle this job the same way. You get really focused. Tell me what it's like when you get focused on a race. Well, I mean, the, the end, at the end of the day, it's not how fast you start, it's how fast you finish. So you just got to stand there and you know you can't back out. Once the gun goes, you just got to run like hell, and hopefully, the faster you run, the quicker you can get it over and done with. What about that time? Let me just recall <laughs> a moment. Because when you get nervous, you go to the loo a lot. I know that with working on this show, right? <laughs> no, because they do. Now, I know that sometimes athletes must want to go to the loo just before you do a race. Well, you go several times before the race. Yeah. And there was one time, I think I must have gone about three or four times. Well, it seemed like that anyway. The starter says, track suits off, so you take your clothes off, you stand there. And all of a sudden, I wanted to go again. And I was wearing, like, a, a pale blue outfit. And I wanted to go so badly, and I stood there, and all of a sudden, I can see a little wet patch coming <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, too much detail! Oh. So, uh, how was your focus, then? Well, it, it was going, because I was praying that the camera wouldn't pan in, and so I was standing there like this. <laughs> I think because normally everyone sees me, I'm standing there, my eyes are just wide open. And yeah. The patch began to appear and I was hoping, you know... I'm so there. was that the race when you run, like that? <laughs> I remember that one. That was a swimming race. 
Now, you like the person that you, you're going to be tonight, don't you? I kind of grew up on him in the 60s, dare I say. Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> so, I mean, since I've been, you know, practising the song, you know, I've began to like him a lot more. And you've learnt a lot more about him, so enlighten us about this person. Well, he was born in 1930 in Georgia. Mm -hmm. He lost his sight when he was seven. And he had a cameo part in the Blues Brothers. Oh, there's been a bit of a buzz there, so tell us who you're going to be tonight, Linford. Well, tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Ray Charles. Ray Charles! <laughs> Adding another record to his list tonight, singing live, Linford Christie is Ray Charles! Take these chains from my heart and set me free. Set me free. You've grown cold and no longer care for, me. care for me. All my faith in you is gone, but the heartaches linger on. Take these chains. Set me free. Take these tears from my eyes and let me see. Let me see. Just a spark of the love that used to be. <laughs> that is such a fabulous transformation. You can take the glasses off now, oh, you're not okay, pretending no. anymore. <laughs> Playing at dressing. This is amazing. Because, I mean, normally we only see you in the one suit and it's light crap. <laughs> no. I couldn't get far in the flares, I don't think. <laughs> no, but in three minutes, you have given us one legend to another. Ah, thank you. Do you know? Oh, yes. And three minutes might be your slowest time. <laughs> but that was your best performance, I'm telling you. And we never saw any of the nerves. Did you have them? Oh, there's a wet patch on the seat. Oh, <laughs> Lovely image. Ladies and gentlemen, look for Christy Ass, Rachel! Thank you. Thank you very much. Now you've seen all five acts, it's nearly time for our studio audience to choose a winning voice. And in future, their voices may well be heard at concerts, gala nights and TV stations while my singing voice will continue to be heard at weddings, karaoke nights and tube stations. Before the vote, let's see how much effort went into making it look effortless with two days in the life of celebrity stars. Lordy, 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 Miss Claudia Girl, you don't look good to me
Yes, I, I got a little itch in the middle of my head and I couldn't find it. Get your frock on. And you're not taking that frock with you either. <laughs> yes, that's it, lovely. You do the mega drama in the face. Where's my week, man? Where's my week? I'll be watching it tomorrow. I'm going to have a meeting. Is that what's happened? I'm nervous. Oh, here we go. Go, 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 go. There's a blood in the heart, man. I loved it. I loved it. In fact, I want to do it again. And I just started looking at the girls and I thought, it doesn't matter, it's a mummy singing to her daughter, stuff everybody else. The most terrifying thing I've ever done. Yeah, same here, actually. But well, we've done a lot, actually, I think about it. But... It's more scary than O levels. Again and again and again and again. Ah, it was great. It was good fun. It's good fun. It's not something I do, you know, in a hurry to get where it's going. Oh, thank you very much. <sighs> <laughs> but that's not the end of it. It's not even the beginning of the end, or even the middle of the beginning of the end, but perhaps it is the end of the beginning. <laughs> Whatever. Studio audience, cast your votes now. We've seen six amazing celebrities become six singing superstars, and now just one act can walk back through those doors to join the Celebrity Stars Hall of Fame. The vote is closed. The doors are about to open, but on whom? Will it be Mark Bannerman as Elvis Presley, Trisha Goddard as Dion Warwick, Mel and Sue as Elaine Page and Barbara Dixon, Claire Sweeney as Celine Dion, or Linford Christie as Ray Charles. And the winner is Claire Sweeney as Celine Dion! What? what? I've been told I can keep a sparkly frock as well. <laughs> <laughs> You're easily pleased. <laughs> yeah, well, you look fabulous in this as well. Look at look at your oh, mum and dad. I know. But you've been a oh, lovely you've been bunch so lovely, of people. Thanks. And I'm so lovely. <laughs> He's <laughs> no, dead nice. I, no, dead nice. We're up. You've been a lovely bunch and congratulations. So if you're a celebrity, you've seen the quality everyone's got to match when they walk through those doors. But as always, only one can be a celebrity champion. And tonight that title goes <laughs> to Claire Sweeney as Celine Dion. <laughs> She'll sing you out and we'll see you soon. Good night. <laughs> Good night.